Hello, and welcome to episode four in River Network's Board Short Series. Today, we'll be covering everyone's favorite topic, evaluation. My name is Brenna Goggin, and I am River Network's Leadership Development Manager. In today's episode, we'll highlight why and how boards should conduct annual assessments of the following. Themselves as board members and as board of directors of an organization, a paid executive director, if you have one, and the organization's goals and strategies or the organization at large, which can be done in conjunction with annual work plan and or strategic planning work. Throughout, we'll provide you with compelling reasons why your board of directors should conduct annual evaluations, the benefits those assessments bring to both the organization and the individuals evaluated, and tools you can use to conduct this work. According to BoardSource, an invaluable resource to the nonprofit sector and one River Network recommends often, over 57% of nonprofit boards do not benchmark their performance against other similar sized or similar budgeted organizations. Why? Conducting annual evaluations can be time intensive at the start, and board members may not know how to begin or how to conduct the evaluation or even what tools or templates to use. Hopefully this episode helps. Consider an, eva an annual evaluation of the board like your annual wellness visit with a physician. It helps to bring attention to issues, discuss ways changes can be made over a set period of time, and highlights what has changed and needs to be celebrated. As a nonprofit community, we are often so mission focused, we forget to celebrate our hard work and progress. Having an annual evaluation process encourages regular check-ins and some good questions that can be asked amongst the team, such as what's our role in the organization's success? What should we expect from ourselves and each other? Taking the time to answer these types of questions can identify and emphasize the strength of the board and or allow members to address issues, ask questions, or confront conflict in a timely fashion. If you remember from episode one, we encourage boards to have job descriptions for both officers and general board members. As part of the evaluation process, you can learn whether or not those job descriptions accurately reflect the role of your members and make any updates necessary to help with recruitment and retainment efforts. Before undergoing any evaluation process, we encourage boards to spend some time building shared understanding and expectations making sure that the individual members understand why an evaluation is being done, what is being assessed, the process that will be used to collect and synthesize the information, the expectation on board member participation, and most importantly, if the results will be confidential or be a group exercise. Allow for board members to ask share hesitancy about the process, and I encourage them and invite them to be a part of this process. Oftentimes, organizations will consider using consultants like River Network to facilitate the process and ensure confidentiality and neutrality. We've linked one of our board evaluation templates to this presentation, but depending upon what your board agreed to evaluate, you'll want to choose the template that best addresses your needs. Some things that you might want to consider evaluating are your board meetings, how's the attendance, what's the engagement level, are your agendas accurately reflecting the work of the meeting? We'll get into this more in episode five. Other things that you might want to look at, percentage of board giving, how many board members are attending events, what is the progress that the board is making towards implementing their fundraising tasks? Are you evaluating the board members themselves? Or is it really the work of the board and the board members and how they relate to one another? Once it is determined what will be appraised, then you can decide how the information will be collected and shared. Some options that you could consider are a survey, where prior to a meeting, members are encouraged to complete a confidential form where they are asked to rank general or offer general feedback on a series of items. 
results can either be shared ahead of the meeting or they become the focus of your next board meeting where ideas on how to address any outstanding issues and next questions are asked. So the questions that you could add to your meeting the conversation could include what surprised you about these results? What needs to be addressed and how? Who is willing to lead or facilitate this? Whose role is it to lead and facilitate this? Does it belong at the board? committee or staff level and what should be celebrated and what should be considered to do more of for a more transparent and interactive approach albeit one that may require up to two board meetings to complete an in-person gallery exercise can be done where a group of leaders from surrounding agencies walls is asked a series of questions individual members can go around the room sharing their ideas observations any outstanding outstanding questions or identifying strategies, goals, and activities for the board to consider. Following that meeting, the information is synthesized, and then the board begins to map out next steps and identify who will lead those efforts. Another approach is to have the board chair and vice chair conduct one-on-one -on -one meetings with each member making it much more conversational in nature and informal. But board chair and vice chair are asking leading questions about the work of the board, the level of connectedness the member has to the work, what ideas they may have to do things differently, or any special projects or knowledge areas they want to help move forward. Having these conversations allows the board chair and vice chair to identify who may be officers in the forthcoming year and how to directly engage their board members throughout the year on results are then shared on the next step identified at the next meeting board directors who oversee a paid executive director should consider an annual appraisal process as part of their core responsibilities the executive director is responsible for setting the organization's culture and an inclusive culture can be directly tied to the success of an organization. Not unlike evaluating board members themselves, evaluating an executive director will allow for the building of relationships between individual members and the board chair and the ED. It encourages transparency and allows for issues to be addressed in a timely way. It also builds accountability into the executive director's job especially as it relates to meeting the organization's goals, instilling a sense of confidence 